Hello everyone. May Almighty God bless you, guide you, protect you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our topic today is power of meditation. The Bible mentions meditation 23 times. 19 of them appear in this book of Psalms. A man after God's heart, David, knew the power of meditation. He wrote more about it than anyone else. Jesus told us to abide in him as a branch abides in the vine. John 15 verses 1 to 8. We know that by abiding he did not mean to pray. Towards the end of that example he said, If we abide in him, then we can ask whatever we want. The Father will give it to us. Prayer is an extension of abiding. Prayer flows out of ab abiding. What does it mean to abide? Paul tells us to pray without season. To first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. That's not possible without ignoring our responsibilities and duties unless the prayer Paul was referring is not limited to posturing on our knees and spending time in the prayer room. The secret place is more than a place. It's a state of mind. Prayer is when I visit him. Meditation is when he visits me. Not all of us can pray 247. It's not even practical or realistic because we think of, we think all of the time. Most of that thinking is automatic. Some of it, it is toxic. God is not interested in just adding more things to do for us, but to shift the focus of our dominant thoughts from worry to worship, from problems to his presence, is what meditation is all about. Let me tell you now, meditation brings visitation. Meditation is a visit with God. It's more like his visit with you. You don't have to be in a prayer room to experience that visitation, but your mind and affection must be directed to him for that visitation to take place. Judas had a thought planted by the devil, which everybody know, which he cultivated and meditated on. on. It resulted with the devil himself entering Judas of all places. During the Last Supper, imagine that wrong meditation brought wrong visitation even though he was in the right place whatever place you are in today work school anywhere focus your meditation on god he will visit you if the devil visited judas during com communion god can visit you during work if you meditate on him in genesis chapter 6 god said that his spirit will not strive with man forever because every intent of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Everyone, only continually, speaks of dominant thoughts of men. These dominant thoughts not only shortened the lifespan of man on earth, but they also limited the activity of God's spirit in the heart of man. That is your thoughts. You are taught life, either resist or assist the Holy Spirit. Are your thoughts fixed on God's promise or problems? Are they filled with worry or worship? When you can't control what happens to you, remember, you are responsible for what happens in you. Some people can't change their thoughts because they believe that they can't control their thoughts. You may not be able to control your circumstances. Or what happens to you but you are responsible for what happens in you everything can be taken from a man but one thing the last of the human freedoms to choose one attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way it is human freedom to choose our attitude as born again spirit-filled believers we must choose to meditate on God's promise God's presence and peace in the midst of whatever we are going through. Paul and Silas did it. Wife is clay hurting. They were singing in their jail. 
let's remember the uh, some of the things that happened in the world the titanic do not sink because there was too much water in the ocean there was too much water in that boat if you are sinking under the weight of your problems tell god about it give it to him and then his peace will guide your heart and mind but after that choose to think on what he says in philippians 4 verse 6 to 8 hallelujah meditation is focused in thinking it takes serious effort you select a verse and reflect on it over and over in your mind if you know how to worry you already know how to meditate hallelujah no other habit can do more to transform your life and make you more like Jesus than daily reflection on scripture. If you look up all the times God speaks about meditation in the Bible, you will amaze at the benefits he has promised to those who take the time to reflect on his word throughout the day. Hallelujah. Sometimes med meditating on scriptures and God's presence is easy. We just turn our thoughts into talks with God. Our worry into worship shift from thinking about problems to thinking about promises. But there will be times where we will have to take our thoughts captive. The book of Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to 10 said, We do that by accepting responsibility for our thoughts, speaking God's word out loud, responding to God in that situation instead of reacting to it. Teach our mind about the Lord and make it focus on God. Our mind is not our master, it is the servant to the master Jesus. Hallelujah. My brethren, finally, we need to address the difference between Christian meditation, as described in the book of Isaiah 26, verse 3, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Psalm 19, verse 14, Psalms 119, verse 148, Psalm 143, verse 5, Psalm 119, verse 15. And you see, there are other cultures that people do, and they say it's a meditation. But what I just want to say here is go in and meditate through God and God will cancel all your problems and see you through. May you be blessed in Jesus' name.